Hi, everyone. So I just uploaded uh, before this a video tier ranking every book that I read in 2021. And I was trying to make it shorter than the last two videos before that on my channel, the first two videos on my channel, uh, because those are really long and people commented on that fact. Um, oh, I should start my timer. But I didn't actually have a timer running during that video while I was recording it, so I didn't know how long it was going. But I just downloaded it from Zoom because this is a Zoom recording because I don't, I'm not going to do actual computer stuff and video stuff and camera stuff. Um, but it ended up being like 40 minutes long, which you know is way, 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 really long. So. Uh, I'm going to try to do a speed version of that video right now. So we're going to see if I can review uh, all 74 books, tier rank, all 74 books that I read this year uh, in under 10 minutes. And that is starting since this video started, which is already 30 seconds gone. Um, so let's go. The Midnight Library was a feel good book, but a, an interesting concept, but a little bit cliche. So I'm going to give it a B tier. Song of Achilles is A tier. Great modern retelling. I didn't like it in the beginning, but it pulled off the emotional impact really, really well. Uh, and it was interesting because I also read the Iliad this year, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, also, great uh, story for um, you know LGBT visibility. Uh, Sapiens, awesome nonfiction. Give me the super well like grasp of the big context of all of human history and some of the forces that have driven us through various stages of history. Super well written too. Some I have amazing quotations that I've saved from that book. Really, really liked it. Um, I'm going to give the entire Lord of the Rings B tier because uh, while I totally understand the hype, um, it was just a little bit difficult for me to read. It was super description dense and all this history and geography going on, um, especially in the Fellowship of the Ring where it's just Frodo walking and walking and walking and walking until you get to Moria and Lothlorien, which are a little more interesting. Um, but uh, definitely a appreciate those series, just not my most enjoyable reads this year. Homegoing is an excellent uh, contemporary story um, that features two sisters who are in Ghana, and then one gets taken into slavery and one doesn't. And so one stays in Ghana and one, um, her family ends up in the Americas, and it follows seven generations of their descendants. Uh, and it really gives you a sense of the, his, the legacy of slavery and of, you know, structural racism uh, in you know, the United States, but also elsewhere in the world. Uh, and very, very interesting. Exhalation, great sci-fi short stories. Each one was so elegantly and technically well executed and super well written. And 1984, did not super much enjoy. Um, we Should All Be Feminist was very good. Uh, not particularly new because it's from 2012, but you know, it was well written. Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, uh, I liked, liked the thoughts about um, art and identity and memory. Uh, and it was a good feel, a good feel good ending that I liked. Uh, the Expanse, the first two books of which I read this year, Leviathan Wakes and Caliban's War, is awesome sci-fi. The Silmarillion I liked better than The Lord of the Rings um, because I like that broad epic history um, from the creation of Tolkien's world all the way to the War of the Ring, and I love the history of the elves um, and Morgoth. Uh, Project Hail Mary is everything that the Mar I liked about The Martian, but better uh, and a little more. Um, I, Robot is a great introduction to Isaac Asimov. Uh, the, I, the Robot series is great Asimov, uh, detective genre through a sci-fi lens, um, and really good sociological uh, exploration of the impacts of population size on different planets um, and planetary economics and the human to robot ratio on, and how that might affect uh, society. Um, Resolved by Ban Ki-moon is a great book for people who are into geopolitics and into the UN, um, and it kind of it, it helped me be more optimistic about uh, you know humanity's role in this globally in this in global politics. Um, the Sun Also Rises, I very much did not enjoy. Uh, it was just too depressing for me. Baron and Luthien was very good. I thought I wouldn't like it, but I did. Uh, it was cool seeing the myth organically evolve into the kind of canon version that I read in the Silmarillion. Picture of Dorian Gray is a great story, beautifully written. Ready Player One, a lot of people don't like, but I really enjoyed it, um, and it was just a fun read. Uh, Brandon Sanderson's The Way of Kings was really good, very long, probably not going to read more Stormlight Archive, but I can totally see why people love it. Exit West, uh, was not bad, it just disappointed me. Um, nothing, it was kind of bland. Um, Axiom's End uh, was pretty good, but I didn't like the ending. It was kind of dissatisfying. Ender's Game is a sci-fi classic. I love everything about that book, um, and I'm going to read the sequel, and maybe some of the ones after that, but definitely Speak for the Dead, which is the sequel to Ender's Game. Uh, Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. I listened to the audiobook, my first ever audiobook. Really well done because it's narrated by Trevor Noah, who's a great storyteller, great at impressions, great at accents. Um, and it's told in this episodic format that lends really well to uh, an audiobook. Transgender history is very good, exposed me to a side of US history that I'm not very familiar with. Humans of New York was very funny and interesting. Um, got some great one-liners from there. Um, Medium of is a massage is very weird and I didn't engage with it fully enough to really grasp all of its nuances. Parable of the Soul is the scariest book I've ever read because it's dystopian sci-fi about climate change and economic inequality, which is really, really too real. Um, Slouching Towards Bethlehem by the late Joan 
Didion, who passed a few days ago. Um, I didn't personally enjoy super much, but uh, I can totally see why people are drawn to her kind of forceful, not forceful, to her um, narrative style, because I can totally feel the force of her writing. The Iliad is a classic, and its influence on everything else that I read um, for school this semester was huge, uh, and it's just so beautiful. And it is an epic about war. It's about the Trojan War, um, but I just loved it's like its treatment of war was really honest, and I loved how it gave attention to both uh, Greek and Trojan narratives. And I love kind of this tragic arc of the rage of Achilles. Uh, American Dirt, I enjoyed when I was reading it, but I feel a little bit weird about it because of the controversy that I read about afterwards about its authorship and you know whether or not the author of this book will have the right to tell the story um, and whether she was you know a faithful representative of this community. Um, the Anthropocene reviewed. I listened to the podcast, which I really, really love, which I think kind of reduced some of the impact of reading the book because there wasn't as much novelty. Um, but it was a good book and I recommend it. A Farewell to Arms, like I recognize how how uh, some people might like it. Um, it was just too dry writing for me. And I, there were some beautiful moments and lines that I saved, but otherwise it was just a slog to get through. The Odyssey I have never liked very much, um, but when you read into it and into like, you know, the narrative work and symbolic um, work that's going on, especially with this frame narrative of uh, when Odysseus recounts his own stories and, you know, is he an unreliable narrator? That gets interesting. Um, and for its influence on the Aeneid, I will give it some uh, some points. Uh, the Five Dialogues was uh, the first Plato that I read this year, and it was very good introduction to Plato, loved all those dialogues. Um, good introduction to philosophy and the method of philosophy. Uh, the Foundation Trilogy by Isaac Asimov is a huge um, pillar of sci-fi, and I understand why. The first two books are S tier. Um, they're talking about the uh, the scope of like the the science of history on a galactic scale, and it's just this epic feeling. Um, Second Foundation gets a little bit too much into individual psychology for me to give me that same clinical scientific feel, but I still loved it as a story, um, and it gave a satisfying conclusion to the trilogy, um, which is relatively short, despite the fact that it's this massive epic. Um, in terms of influence and scale uh, of sci-fi. Liquid Rules is good sci good nonfiction. I liked the first book, Stuff Matters Better, which I read a few years ago, but Liquid Rules is good and interesting. Carry On, Short Essays by John Lewis, very inspiring, um, very eloquent, loved it. Uh, Charisma Myths, only self-help book I read this year, but it was very interesting. Um, liked uh, this perspective on charisma and charismatic behaviors as just a set of learned behaviors that can be learned by anyone. 112263 by Stephen King is a good book uh, nothing bad about it, but it's just so, so long and for not enough payoff, I think. Uh, Broken Earth by N.K. Jemisin is very, very good, uh, especially fifth season, which pulls off this amazing narrative trick um, that's a very bold choice and like it's a surprise. You don't see it coming uh, and I'm not going to say much more about it. It has to do with perspective, but uh, it's amazing. If you read it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It is a very heavy read. The characters aren't very... Uh, happy most of the time, and it's, you know, a dystopian sci-fi, so it was a little heavy, and I needed to cleanse my palate afterwards, but it was very good. Um, uh, if Not Winter is a collection of poems by uh, Sappho, the original lesbian, I learned, um, and uh, it's translated by Anne Carson. I loved her poetry. It was super good. The Republic of Plato, I absolutely hated, uh, and that gets a D tier. Uh, Jade City and Jade War are very good um, sci-fi, sci-fi fantasy. They are kind of like gang warfare, but it's clan warfare because it's this Asian-esque setting and it's on the cusp of modernity. So there is melee combat with knives and, um, you know, like fantastically enhanced uh, fighters, but also guns. Uh, and it's very interesting. There's a lot of politics, there's a lot of family stuff going on, gray characters, love it. Uh, Almond is a Korean novel that was recommended to me by a friend. Um, has to do with a character whose amygdala is uh, developed in a different way from normal pe from, from most people. Um, so uh, he, he's less emotionally engaged with the world. And so, um, that was very interesting to me. Of Mice and Men is a classic, pretty short, but uh, I, I enjoyed it. Um, sad ending. Uh, the Oristaya is amazing. That gets an S tier. I loved, I wrote a paper on the Oristaya that took me like 24 hours to write over the course of a week. Super good. So much going on. The language in Agamemnon is amazing. I like the incorporation of Trojan perspectives in, in Cassandra and also of the impact of the war on the Greeks, um, especially in the beginning of the Agamemnon. That was very good. The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro and Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro are, are two of the best books that I read this year. They're absolutely phenomenal. I love his use of the um, very reflective character and on the non-linear narrative where they are remembering stuff from their past and just linked by associations, things remind them of other memories. Um, but the order in which those memories are revealed is very, very intentional and creates this kind of like process of discovery that's so good on so many levels. 
Um, highly, highly recommend, especially Never Let Me Go, I think is more accessible. Antigone by Sophocles is very good. Um, as a, as, that's a Greek tragedy. The Handbook by Epictetus is, is good, although I liked um, Epicurus better, but I didn't read any of his work in its entirety, mostly because it didn't survive in its entirety, so it's not included here. The Aeneid by Virgil is very, very good. Um, I like how it plays with the Iliad and the Odyssey and kind of recasts their characters. Uh, the Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander uh, Dumas is also excellent. Um, there's a lot of emotional and time investment in the beginning because it's like 150 pages of just suffering, but it totally pays off uh, and it pays off a ton. It's like, and it's pretty long, um, but yeah, very good. On Features of the Will by uh, St. Augustine of Hippo. More philosophy that I read this year. It was pretty good, interesting read about um, free will, the problem of evil, God's foreknowledge, and how those things interact. Uh, digressively about um, what sin is and the respective jurisdictions of natural, of divine and human law, but not going to get super into that. When We Were Orphans was disappointing to me compared to the other two Ishiguro, Ishiguro books that I read, mostly because I think he came out of reflection and into action, which is not his strong suit. And also there was some stuff, a uh, trigger warning about sexual assault that made me a little bit uncomfortable and I didn't really didn't like the ending. Um, but yeah, uh, The Promised Land by Barack Obama, very, very good, long, but very good. Um, the Divine Co Dante's Inferno, um, the only part of the Divine Comedy that I read in its entirety was very good. Um, although there was a lot of like specific Florentine stuff that I just like went over my head. Um, I'm over my 10 minute mark, I know, but I only have seven books left. So let's, let's speed through. Um, I read a collection of Euripides plays that were very good. Um, Hecuba, Andromache, Trojan Woman, and Resos. Uh, three of those are about, well, all four are Trojan-centric perspectives on the Trojan War, which is very interesting. Um, the Iliad gives a fair amount of treatment to the Trojans, but this is like centered on the Trojans. Um, and I liked seeing the impact of the war on the defeated. Um, uh, hey or Hi Ibn Yaksan by Ibn Tufail or Tufail uh, was very interesting philosophical story um, that I read for philosophy. A Thousand Ships was, I love the premise of this feminist retelling the Trojan War from the perspective of all the women, both Greek and Trojan. I just thought it was way too ham-fisted and cliche in its delivery uh, and like insultingly uh, explanatory, especially the letters from Penelope to Odysseus, which are just Penelope explaining the plot of the Odyssey to Odysseus. Um, anyway, uh, SPQR, great history of Rome. Uh, very interesting because I read a lot of the primary like Roman authors, Roman historians, Livy, Polybius, Plutarch, Tacitus, two of those are Greek, but hist historians of Rome. Um, but it's interesting to see how they their views compare to modern historians and what modern historians think about them. It's very interesting to see the history of Rome and the way in which historians learn the history of Rome and study the history of Rome. Uh, very good book. Um, the Hobbit, I enjoyed more than The Lord of the Rings because it's just a more interesting story to me, uh, easier to follow. Mathematician's Apology and um, Six Easy Pieces did not make much of an impression on me on me um so they get very low ratings and i am done that is the speed version and i am ending this video uh now